Hello students, welcome to La Excellence. Welcome to our monthly current affairs session and we'll be seeing October current affairs in this session. As I have already told you, now this is the time for us to focus mainly from prelims point of view. So we will be focusing most of the issues which are important for prelims 2017. So let's see some of these issues quickly. The very first issue in this particular month was actually with respect to Binami Transactions Act 2016. November was the time when demonetization was in news and it was very important for us to focus on all the measures taken by the government with respect to black money. And now Binami Transaction Act 2016 was also one such measure taken by the government. Most of the students when they focus on only demonetization but UPSC may ask you questions with respect to Binami Transaction Act or the double transaction agreement which was signed with different countries like Cyprus. So let's look what exactly Binami Transaction Act 2016 talks about. The first point is it has actually replaced 1988 Act. So UPSC may ask you consider the following statements with respect to Binami Transactions Act 2016. So the first statement they may give you is with respect to this. This has replaced Binami Transactions Act 1986, 1988. Years nowadays UPSC is changing and they are making a wrong statement out of it. So please look at that carefully. Second important thing is imprisonment will be there up to seven years. It prohibits recovery of property held by Binami from Binami Dar by the real owner. They may change this language. Liable for confiscation of government without paying compensation. That is, government need not pay compensation if you are caught with the Binami transaction. At last, it says that there will be an appellate authority which will adjudicate the cases which are related to this. High possibility if a question comes on that, they may ask you one, two, three, four about these four or five points and you should be knowing this carefully. The second important issue is actually with respect to India and Bhutan. If you observe India's growing relations with Nepal, India's growing relation with Bangladesh and India's growing relationship with Sri Lanka and Bhutan shows it clearly that there can be a question either about SARC or there can be a question with respect to BIMSTEC without Pakistan. But let's see India Bhutan now. Later in further sessions, I'll be taking SARC, BIMSTEC and other things, right? So first thing with respect to India and Bhutan was we established the free trade regime. It was there, but it came to end in 2016. So again, it is revived. Duty free transit of Bhutanese goods for third countries is also been agreed that is from Bhutan it will enter into India and from India it can either go to Nepal or it can go to Bangladesh so that is also agreed and trade will not happen in dollars but usually it will happen in Indian rupees and Bhutanese gold rooms as I have told you in economic survey I have showed the currency of South Africa Mexico and here Bhutan currency is also there. I would just request you to remember some of these currencies which are important for us, right? Nothing much to see with respect to India, Bhutan, at least this year. But what we need to focus is actually about BBIN network and BIMSTEC. These are there in further months. So we will be seeing them carefully there. The next important issue is actually with respect to India and Singapore relations where it has been agreed by Singapore that not only with the Indian government but they will also have good relations with West Bengal, Rajasthan, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. The more focus of India-Singapore relations with respect to the government schemes is Smart Cities Drive and Skill India. So nothing much will be as with respect to India and Singapore but if at all you are making international relations notes anywhere about India and Singapore, the state's relations with Singapore is also important. Nowadays, there is relations of India with other countries. At the same time, 
some states within India also have relations with those states. So anything can be asked. If at all they ask you a question about what is the role of Indian states in foreign policy or how has the new trend evolved where the states are having good relations with other countries, right? So this becomes important. Next important thing from prelims point of view is about BIMSTEC. It was actually established with the Bangkok Declaration in 1997 and recently when it was held in Goa, there was leaders retreat outcome document which actually came up with respect to BIMSTEC. If you ask me how many countries are part of it, BIMSTEC has seven countries. The number of letters in BIMSTEC is seven. So the countries which are there are also seven. So B stands for Bangladesh, I stands for India, M stands for Myanmar, S stands for Sri Lanka, T stands for Thailand. Whereas EC, there is nothing of that sort. You have Nepal and Bhutan. So seven countries. The full form of this is Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multi-Sectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation. Right? When you are talking about Bay of Bengal, you need to understand that Nepal and Bhutan are also dependent on Bay of Bengal. So because of this, it is very, very important for us to know. Either they ask you a question, which of the following countries are part of BIMSTEC? The second question is, they may ask you with respect to Bangkok declaration or which declaration actually led to the formation of BIMSTEC. Remember, BRICS conference happened in Goa. Along with that, BIMSTEC also happened. Majority of you will be focusing only on BRICS, but BIMSTEC is also important. Because of that, we need to understand both these. Right? So let's quickly move to the other important thing that actually happened in Goa that was with respect to BRICS. When we actually look at this, recently in this Goa summit, the argument which they brought up was with respect to building responsive, inclusive and collective solutions. So this can be asked, what was the document recently launched in Goa? Sometimes these type of questions are asked, that is the reason I have given you these lines which are important from exam point of view and the second important thing is BRICS was formed in 2009 and in 2011 South Africa joined. The first summit was held at Ekaterinburg, Russia. This was already asked and there is something called as contingent reserve arrangement of the BRICS. You are all aware about the new development bank which was actually formed with respect to BRICS. Now we are looking at BRICS contingent reserve arrangement for this bank and you know KV Kamat is the first chief of NDB. Fortaleza declaration actually led to the formation of NDB. Already these questions have come that is the reason I am not stressing much on that. Contingent reserve arrangement means some money which the bank has to keep to give loans. So that is being made right. So this is very very important for us. The next important thing that you need to see with respect to Goa is where they may ask you with respect to mains. What are the five goals of Goa? Institution building must remain a main focus area. Transform quantum and quality of trade and investment linkages among BRICS. If you actually see, yes, there is trade between BRICS countries, but it is less because it is not a continuous geographical area. Because of that, it's very important for us to look at this. Focus on key priorities of our economic transformations. Secure our societies from terror. Thriving people to people exchanges. This will be there everywhere. Here, trade is common. Institution building must remain a focus area where they are talking about BRICS as an institution to grow and form something like European Union, right? So this is what they are talking in mains if they ask you a question about BRICS, what was the agreement and all this becomes important else least possibility they may ask you with respect to this. The next important area which may be neglected by the students but high possibility a question can come is actually with respect to African Asian Rural Development Organization or what is called as EAARDO and India. Right? 
Recently, you might have seen, even in the last year, UPSC had asked questions about India and Africa relationship. Here, this is actually talking about rural development organization. There are multiple organizations in the world which India is part of, but we are not aware of those. But most of these are actually happening in Delhi nowadays. Most of the summits are conducted here. At that time, this becomes important from prelims point of view. Definitely people who even though if they have read newspaper at that time, they wouldn't have revised it by now. This is the reason why these areas become important for us. So what exactly you should know about it? They may say that it is part of United Nation organization, but that answer would be wrong. It is an autonomous intergovernmental organization established in 1962. And you will be shocked to know the headquarters is in New Delhi. Even though the headquarters is in New Delhi, we are not aware of this organization much. How many countries are part of it? 31 countries. Please remember it is Africa and Asia alone and it looks at capacity building in rural development so the rural development one will be not be focused much but they may change this autonomous or intergovernmental organization and they may actually put some other words to just confuse you right so please be careful about it the next major issue which is very very important for us is actually with respect to commonwealth as you are aware, Maldives quit Commonwealth recently and the reason for this was when there was some allegations against the opposition leaders, the government in Maldives actually took strict action against them. At that point of time, India also said to Maldives that what you are doing against the opposition party is not fair. Even with that. India, when it came to Commonwealth, India said whatever Maldives has done is right within its constitutional framework. So let us give Maldives a fair chance to interrogate and come out with proper solution. So when India said this, the allegations against Maldives were actually removed. The Maldivian Prime Minister or President at that point of time actually visited India and again he reiterated that his country's policy will not be neighborhood first alone but it will be India first. When India had actually helped them in sustaining their democracy from the coup from LTT and other groups at that point of time they made it to be India first. Recently the relationship went bad because India was supporting the opposition leader but now the relationship is back. So it's very important for us to know about this. As Commonwealth is a news, they may ask you certain facts with respect to Commonwealth. So let us see some of these facts. Rwanda and Mozambique were the last two countries that joined. The membership in this is based on free and equal voluntary cooperation. There are 52 countries and the declaration which led to this was London Declaration. And in 1949, UK and other countries that were part of the British Empire actually said they will be part of this commonwealth. And if you are aware, Queen is monarch of almost 16 member countries and Canada was the first independent country within commonwealth in 1867. And this is the reason why after 1867, 1885 and so on, you would actually observe that most of the moderates were asking for dominion status. Why? The reason is they had granted dominion status to some of the countries like Canada. So this is also important for us. 1867, now it is 2017, 150 years. So this becomes important for you, right? So just go through this carefully once. The next important issue where some countries have quit International Criminal Court is South Africa, Burundi and Gambia. And you will see in November current affairs that even Russia had quit International Criminal Court. The main reason for this is the International Criminal Court takes action only against the least developed countries and it is in the hands of Western dominated developed countries and not on any other and these rules are only for these 
and the P5 countries are usually exempted from this. Russia quit mainly because of the allegations of human rights violations which actually happened in Ukraine. So let's see when it was actually formed with respect to prelims. It was actually formed or the headquarters is in The Hague. Genocide, crimes against humanity and the war crimes will be usually seen in this and it was formed with 1998 statute. Kenya and Uganda have also told that they will be also leaving International Criminal Court. If that happens, the relevance of International Criminal Court reduces over a period of time. The next important issue is actually with respect to United Nations Human Rights Council. Here we need to understand that there was an other body, UN Human Rights Committee, which was there before. But almost every country was actually part of this. Even though the countries had committed lot of human rights violations, they were part of this. So the member countries decided to come out of this and form a new one. So this was in 2006 to promote human rights. And it's a 47 member nation headquartered at Geneva. It is part of UN system. I told you AARDO is an autonomous one. Here it is part of UN system. This type of language changes usually happens in the UPSC exam when we actually look at previous year questions. UN system intergovernmental body for promoting human rights. So just if at all they ask you a question about this, it may be helpful. That is the reason we need to look at this one. The next important one from economy point of view which is important is public debt management cell. It actually looks at the internal and external liabilities of the central government. Till now, the liabilities of the central government is actually taken care by RBI. But it is said that RBI has two important one. One, it has to look at the monetary rates or monetary policy. The second one, it has to focus on this debt management. What exactly does that mean? Let's take a simple example. That is, if RBI has to focus on monetary policy, then it will focus on inflation alone. Why? It needs to control inflation. We have the monetary policy committee which has been set up recently and it says 4 plus or minus 2 has to be considered. Right? But if it is focusing on debt management, then RBI has to focus on actually giving the bonds of the government at low interest rate. Whenever it gives at low interest rates, if government bonds are given to the public, then government will be paying less money to the market. This will be benefiting the government. But unfortunately, RBI is confused whether it has to focus on inflation or it has to focus on the monetary policy. If it focuses on inflation, on controlling inflation, then usually it will have impact on the debt management. So to segregate this, the government has come up with what is called as public debt management cell and later they want to convert it into agency, which may take time. So if they ask you, it actually looks at the internal and external liabilities of the central government. So this point becomes important for you. So let's see next important issue that is actually with respect to Krishna Water Dispute Tribunal 1. Here what you need to understand is there is two water dispute tribunal of Krishna. It is associated with 1 and 2. The first one was in 1969. And the four states through which the water flows is Karnataka, Maharashtra, AP and Telangana. Again, now the Telangana government has asked that today there are four states. Earlier, there were only three states. At that time, water to Andhra Pradesh was given. But now we have Telangana as well. So you should again form this water dispute tribunal and consider some more water to Telangana as well. The court has actually told that it is not valid argument. The reason for this is when Andhra Pradesh got its share before, then they considered the lands of both Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. So if at all you want to discuss anything about this river, then it has to be between Telangana and Andhra Pradesh and you cannot involve Karnataka and Maharashtra as well. As this year we saw, 
Kaveri issue. We saw Krishna. Mahadi issue is in news. Narmada is in news. And if you actually observe Namami Gange, Namami Brahmaputra, Indus Water Treaty, all these rivers have become very, very important. High possibility this year, geography through maps need not be from world alone, but it can be focused from India also. So please try to read the rivers or drainage system carefully once, right? And uh, in polity, please try to read the Interstate Water Dispute Act of 1956. The next important issue in polity is actually with respect to United Group of Rajya Sabha, which was actually formed by the Rajya Sabha team to ensure that you will have some time allotted for yourself to talk in the parliament. The reason for this is based on the strength of the political party, different parties or different people have been given different time to speak in the parliament. As majority of the parties in Rajya Sabha do not have required strength, they get very less time. Just to ensure that they get more time, a united group of Rajya Sabha was actually formed to help the business advisory committee to give more time to them. A group of 22 MPs belonging to parties with less than 4 MPs and independent were brought together. Apart from BJP and Congress, this will be the third highest one. Time allotted to parties to speak depends on strength. Because of less status, they use it to get only 3 minutes. Now, they usually get more time. The next important issue which will be asked for sure in prelims is about Ek Bharat Shreshth Bharat initiative. India yearbook clearly gives you what exactly does that mean. It is cultural relation between different states. This is given clearly and I have showed you this page where I have told you what type of questions will come. Please watch the India yearbook or read India yearbook for Ek Bharat Shreshth Bharat initiative. Right? Then the next important one with respect to economy was bad bank. What is the meaning of bad bank? It actually tries to purchase all the non-performing assets of the banks so that the banks will be free of non-performing assets and they can start lending afresh and when they purchase the loan amount will be actually given back to the banks and this bad bank will decide whether some projects are worth for recovery or should we give up so this will be decided by bad bank NPS is a news economic survey I have told you again and again NPS is very very important right and most importantly there is another project by the finance ministry which is actually with respect to project insight and what exactly does that say it talks about widening tax base by using technology that is it actually focuses on how exactly can we widen the tax base you know that demonetization and the main goal of that was to increase the tax base and i have also showed you in economic survey that there are only seven persons out of hundred who is actually paying tax when we consider these information the project insight is very very important they may ask you project insight deals with what it's very very important for you to look at it then the second important thing is indian bridge management system that is it actually tries to have an inventory of all the bridges that needs to be repaired and how exactly we have to take care of these bridges right setu bharatam something like this is important for us and least possibility a question can be expected on this where is india's first medi park chengalpattu near chennai in tamil nadu the next important issue that we need to focus is with respect to a global competitiveness index which is actually launched by world economic forum so they may just ask you who releases global competitiveness index right these two are important then the mining surveillance system is actually established by the ministry of mining just to ensure that wherever mining is happening and how exactly it is happening to have 
this clear understanding of the resources that are present and how exactly it is being extracted and the impact of that on earth is also being studied. The satellite which is actually used for this is Cartosat and USGS. So these two are also important from prelims point of view. The third most important one with respect to science and technology was a zero defect zero effect scheme which was actually spoken by the Prime Minister Narendra Modi where he actually said that you should actually focus on the products which has zero defect. For this the technological transfer is very very important. At the same time he told that the focus should not be only on manufacturing much but the focus should also be on conserving the environment. For that he actually says that there should be zero effect on environment as well. So this is what we speak about zero defect and zero effect scheme. So it is actually through MSME where the focus will be on top quality products by using clean technology. The next important one is actually with respect to the agricultural marketing and farm friendly reforms index. And the indicators for this is with respect to competitiveness, efficiency and transparency. Least possibility a question can be expected but because of these indices sometime UPSC may ask you. So they may say which are the indicators which are actually considered for that. It is competitiveness, efficiency and transparency. The next important one is with respect to Niti Aayog reforms. As you are aware the Niti Aayog is actually working and some of the reports are already being published. One is actually with respect to agriculture market reforms I talk with respect to the index and it is also talking about ENAM. The second one is actually with respect to land leasing reforms high possibility in mains they may ask you question about land reforms with respect to this. And the third one is with respect to reforms related to forestry on private land, felling and transit of tree. That is how exactly we should ensure that forestry is grown on the private land. What is more important is about the land lease reforms. What exactly does that mean? Because of some agreements or acts which were passed by the central government before, most of the landowners are skeptic about giving their land to tenants. Even though they give lands to tenants, there is no proper documents which say that the tenant has been given the land because of the fear that the tenant may claim that the land belongs to them in future. As tenant is actually not getting the required documents, he cannot go and ask for fertilizer subsidy. He cannot go and ask for loans or any other facilities which the government is actually giving to a farmer. On the other hand, the land owner is not interested to claim on his own. He cannot, he don't want to take loan. He don't want to go for these subsidies, which would actually benefit the tenant. So because of this, the productivity is reducing. The tenant is also suffering. Government's reach is also reducing. So what government has decided is to benefit everyone. They have told that there should be proper documents which say that this land belongs to them and there should be proper protection of these lands then it will be very easy for these people to come out and say that yes we have given this for the tenants and from the tenants point of view they say that tenants will also be interesting in investing the money to ensure that the productivity of agriculture in the land or modernization techniques has actually improved. When it comes to soil health card or whether it comes to lab to land reforms of the government, if anything has to be successful, then land reforms has to be successful. So a model land Rees act is being taught by the Niti Aayog and it actually looks at these issues. One is from the tenant point of view, landowner point of view and from the government point of view. The Karnataka government has actually have maintained a digital record of all the lands. It's very important for us to ensure that that happens in all these states as well. Right. So Niti Aayog reforms mostly from Maine's point of view. It is very, very important for you to look at that. Then you have to see the Urja Ganga project. What does it mean? 
it is actually a gas pipeline project in Varanasi which actually looks at piped cooking to residents and CNG for the vehicles. So they may just ask you what is Urja Ganga project. It is actually about gas pipeline connection in Varanasi and they want to spread in almost other areas in UP. Then Vayoshreshta Samman. It is for old people by Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. So please try to see. They may ask you. Vayoshreshta Samman is associated with whom? Least possibility they may ask you but still just try to read that once. Sajha Abhiyan of Rajasthan, it is a drive to end child marriages, nothing much to see in this, you just need to know what exactly is this Abhiyan. Then we need to read about autophagy in science and technology, that is self eating of cells, one cell will be eating the other cell, because of this the memory loss and all will be there, most of the diseases is usually associated with this. So they may ask you what is autophagy that is self eating of cells. So just try to know about this once. Alzheimer's disease and all is usually associated with this. The next important issue high possibility equation can come in prelims is actually with respect to Swachh Bharat mission the second anniversary of it. In this we are looking at two important things. One, Gujarat and Andhra Pradesh have been declared open defecation free in urban areas whereas Himachal Pradesh, Sikkim and Kerala has been declared open defecation free in rural areas. So they may ask you this question in prelims. So please be prepared. Nothing much to remember, you just need to know the states. Then the next important thing is global gender gap index of world economic forum so when they ask you they may ask you about the indicators sometime global gender gap index in march magazine also we have seen so the indicators are economic participation and opportunity for women health and survival educational attainment and political empowerment so they may give you one two three four and they may ask you which of the following is actually considered for global gender gap index right so this is very very important for us the next important one is about the oil spills so another major issue this year is actually with respect to oil spills the science and technology if you actually see there is a membrane which is being found with respect to oil spills is hydrophobic membrane what does it mean it does not absorb water so because of this what happens oil is absorbed by the membrane and you will see water not being absorbed that is you will have oleophilic and hydrophobic properties this will actually help in working in the marine spill areas right so this can be asked hydrophobic membrane but you can use this in mains more rather than asking in prelims Next important science and tech high possibility even in India yearbook current affairs they have actually said about this that is Himanj. They may ask you what is Himanj. Himanj is a research station in Himalayas. Don't get, don't get confused it is not in Arctic it is not in Antarctic it is in Himalayas. So UPSC may change the language they may say that it is a research station in Himalayas it is a research station in Arctic Antarctic or none of the above. At that point in time, it is very, very important for you to know this, right? So, Himanj, it is research station in Himalayas. What exactly does it read? It tries to see what is the impact of global warming on ice caps there, how much melting is actually happening, all these information. Science and tech, other major issue of this month is actually with respect to hyper elastic bone and autograft. When we are actually talking about hyper elastic bone, we are talking about the 3D printing. Earlier we used to go for autograph. The meaning of this is, if you have any problem in one part of the body, especially with respect to bone, they used to take bone from other parts and they used to implant it in your body. Just to ensure that the immune system in our body works better. But now with 3D printing technology, we are actually producing synthetic material that can be implemented under the skin for new bone to grow 
on or replace all together so because of this 3d printing is already asked they may ask you with respect to differences between autograft and hyper elastic bones as well so please try to read this carefully once the next major thing is with respect to defense where we need to understand that to ensure the coast guard can work more effectively you have two coast guard ships aryaman and atulya which have been incorporated into the indian coast guard so this is important just try to see then you need to look at biotech kisan they may ask you what does biotech kisan deal with here the scientists will work in sync with farmers and it is also associated with cattle genomics so this is important in mains whenever you are writing about government's role or increasing agriculture then you need to talk about these projects as well right then we need to look at internal security where you have to focus on the joint exercises between india and china sino india cooperation or hand in hand joint exercise right it is actually between india and china so they may simply ask you hand in hand as in between which two countries as i have already told you in india your book you have series of naval exercises november month as well you will get some naval exercises or military exercises between different countries so it's very important for us to remember that then you have new urban agenda habitat related one which actually happened at kyoto so if we actually see un conference on housing and sustainable urban development was actually set up there so where was the recent un conference on housing and sustainable urban development held or un habitat so this actually comes under un habitat so a question can be under un habitat a un conference on housing and sustainable development was set up usually sometimes they may ask you with respect to these agreements the first statement can be with respect to un conference or un habitat the second one can be with respect to the aar do which we saw so usually upsc may combine these things sometimes so it's very important for us to go through this once carefully right then what is more important for us is with respect to a multi fuel domestic cooking stove this does not use only one type of fuel it uses wood coal cow dung agricultural residue all this so they may ask you what is near the it is multi fuel domestic cooking stove as i have already told you we are focusing only from prelims point of view and because of this this factual information is important then kashmir's red stag is important it is a critically endangered species so they may ask you which of the following are critically endangered kashmir's red stag is also one right then this year one of the most important area in globe or from maps point of view is ross sea it is also called as last ocean as it is not touched by the humans so it is actually present near antarctica here we have world's largest marine park being developed so because of that this is very very important for us the next important one is actually with respect to nobel peace prize usually we are not bothered about this much in the exam but because of colombia the significance of that john manuel santos actually got this they may ask you a question about this directly or they may ask you a question about colombia so please be prepared on both of these issues the most important one or high possibility a question can be asked either this year or next year is actually with respect to kigali agreement which is actually an amendment to 1987 montreal protocol as you are all aware Montreal protocol actually deals with ozone depleting substances right when we are actually talking about ozone depleting substances once the chlorofluorocarbons were there it was actually replaced with 
HFCs, hydrofluorocarbons. The chloro which was there in chlorofluorocarbons was the one which was actually reacting with ozone and it was creating lot of problem to most of the countries. Now, to reduce this ozone, they brought HFCs. But unfortunately, when we look at this hydrofluorocarbons, these are highest greenhouse gases. That is, they absorb maximum temperature of the sun and they heat the earth much more when compared to carbon dioxide. So, because of this, in at Kigali, the countries have come together and they have agreed that they would reduce HFC 23 emissions. There are almost 19 hydrofluorocarbons, only HFC 23 is being removed. So, there is nothing great about it, but still, this is first victory for the developing countries. The reason for this is, the developing countries do not have the required technology and we have always told that Whenever it comes to ozone depletion, which usually affects the countries closer to the poles, then developed countries are very much interested to look into this issue. But whenever it comes to climate change, the developed countries do not take it seriously. So HFCs has to be removed from Montreal Protocol and it has to be brought into Kyoto Protocol. And this has been achieved, at least for one, this is a beginning and it's very, very important for us to look at it. So, what can be the question about it? The first one is actually 197 countries has agreed to reduce the greenhouse gases which would lead to hydrofluorocarbon emissions which is HFC 23 and there are 19 HFCs, right? And what is the deadline that has been given by 2040? There are different timelines for different countries. I will be showing you that as well. What is... HFC 23, they may ask you specifically about this. It is a potent gas that results when producing a refrigerant HCFC 22 and 1 kg of this traps 14,800 times more heat than equivalent amount of carbon dioxide. As I told you, it's very very important for us to look at this. So let's see the timelines. The, there are three groups which are actually present here. The first group includes richest countries like US and EU and they have told that they will freeze production and consumption of HFCs by 2018. They will reduce them to about 15% of 2012 levels by 2036. So you will see the second group which is actually dominated by countries like China, Brazil and other countries, India is not part of this, India is actually part of the third one. They will freeze HFC use by 2024 and cut it to 20% of 2021, 2021 levels by 2045. So this is with respect to second group. The third group countries are like India, Iran, Saudi Arabia. They have said that they will freeze HFC use by 2028 and reduce to 15% of what was present in 2025 by 2047. So these countries can emit as much as possible till 2025 and after that they can actually reduce it. So what exactly here they say is that different countries have different capabilities but everyone has common responsibilities. Common but differentiated responsibilities, CBDR, can be seen here, right? It's very important for us to look at these timelines as high possibility they may ask you a question. Consider the following with respect to Kigali agreement, first group, second group and third group they may ask you. So please be prepared. The next major issue is actually with respect to carbon price. Both in prelims and mains, there can be a question about it. What exactly does that mean? A carbon price is a cost applied to carbon pollution to encourage reduction of the amount of GHG they emit into the atmosphere. Indian government has said that we are actually taxing coal. We are actually taxing petrol and diesel now. Earlier, we used to give subsidy to emit, but now we are taxing more. So this is what we call carbon price. That is whenever if any government or any company is involved in emissions, then they have to pay. Let's say 
that the country can or company can actually earn money from this as well one is through carbon tax the country by putting tax on the emissions can earn money the second one is emission trading system that is say there is a company x it is being said that this company requires at least 100 tons of carbon dioxide should be emitted in an year right so this company is we tell them that you can emit 50 we have given them the permission to emit 50 tons but most of the carbon dioxide which this company used to emit used to be from production of electricity now what this company will do it will actually try to go for the solar energy where no carbon dioxide is emitted so it has 50 tons of carbon dioxide with it still so what it can do it can sell to other company which does not have this technology so let's take iron and steel company which will emit carbon dioxide majorly so now a company which has converted into solar energy now they can sell this emissions to other company and the other company when they actually purchase it it will be an additional burden on them over a period of time even they will reduce it so this is called as emission trading system one is carbon tax which actually benefits the government the second one is emission trading either it benefits the government or the companies which are involved in it this will ensure that the industries will be motivated or there will be some incentive for these industries to reduce carbon dioxide emission right so it's very very important for us to know these terminologies upsc has always asked us questions on this the next important one is the harikatha which is actually popular in andhra pradesh and karnataka as well is actually from maharashtra culture alpana is a bengal folk art and this year from history you have to read about deen dayal upadhyay and sardar vallabhai patel so DDU when you are actually reading there are some schemes associated with this individual or dignitary in India yearbook please try to see with respect to skill development or urban poor then the most important one which can be neglected but still high possibility a question can come is with respect to vermin issue what are these vermins there are some animals which actually spoil the crops agricultural crops so the farmers will be usually given permission to shoot down these in those areas specifically if any animal is declared to be a vermin then you can usually see that the farmers can usually kill them and they will not have any punishment most of the animals are converted into vermins with respect to the wildlife protection act under which we will be seeing schedule 5 this year the news was actually with respect to Nilgai which is the most important vermin which was creating trouble and the other animals are wild boar, rhesus monkey etc. So my request to you is they may ask you what is vermin so don't think it's a weed or anything it is actually an animal whenever we call something to be a vermin you can shoot it down. The problem with this vermin is that it actually tries to create trouble to the agricultural farms or the local communities which are present there. So to ensure this under Wildlife Protection Act Schedule 5, vermin is being declared. But the issue is that most of the states are declaring most of these animals under vermin and it is creating a lot of trouble for the protection of wildlife. This is the reason why the environmentalists are fighting against this issue. High possibility a question can come in prelims about this. Then at last we need to see one major port that is being planned to develop is the Sagar port near Sagar Islands in West Bengal. And you also have to know about a fact called as point name which means no one. That is nothing is usually present, neither species, plants, fishes or anything. Where exactly can you see this? This is actually seen near the gyre of South Pacific Ocean between the Pacific Plate and the Nazca Plate. As you are aware, wherever the ocean currents, they usually 
be circular in nature gyres develop you usually see one in north atlantic ocean you have one in south atlantic you have in pacific as well we usually focus more from the north atlantic point of view but this is also important then red sandalwood is actually grown in the southern parts of eastern ghats and it is critically endangered this was in news that is the reason they may ask you which of the following is critically endangered or they may ask you where is red sandalwood usually grown right then you have smooth coated otter which is present near krishna wildlife sanctuary and it is vulnerable from environment and ecology point of view as you are aware they will ask you which of the following is vulnerable critically endangered they may ask you match the following as well most of the times these will be from the current affairs itself so my request to you is please go through these issues carefully once these are some of the important issues from prelims point of view there are some other things which are important from only mains which we have left here we will be seeing them only after prelims so my request to you guys please go through this carefully once as i have told you to have a complete overview of current affairs you have to see monthly current affairs we have to see magazines you have to see economic survey you have to see india year book and geography through maps once you can cover all this it would be very very easy for you to answer majority of prelims based questions in this right so please go through this carefully once it's more than enough thank you guys thanks for watching